Hello! Back again for the final video in my Moog Matriarch Filter Deep Dive series. Again, this video is way longer than I originally planned, but there was a lot to cover and still a lot left unexplored. If you haven't seen the first two videos in the series, they may be worth checking out. I covered a lot of stuff in those videos. But uh, you don't need to watch them all to understand what's going on in this one. At least I don't think you do. I don't process the audio with any effects or compression, unless I mention it specifically in the video, so what you hear is what you get. And uh, you should be able to recreate these sounds fairly easily if you wish. But that also means that at times it gets loud, so if you're listening on headphones, please be warned. The first 20 or 30 minutes of this video deals primarily with feedback and cross-patching and ways to get different sounds and tones out of the matriarch. I do go off on a few tangents and spend some time exploring the attenuators as well as different gate patching ideas, but at the heart of it this video is still primarily about the matriarch's filter. The last half of the video is a few more complicated filter patches dealing primarily with the uh, parallel filter mode which I didn't really touch on in the previous videos. I'll put an index in the description if you want to skip to the fun parts, but first here's a quick sample of some of the patches we'll be putting together. Alright, so let's start with some cross patching and maybe some feedback patching. So first we'll start by patching the synth in mono, so patch VCF2 out to VCA1 in. Next patch VCF1 out into VCF2 in, and what we've just set up is two low pass filters in series. So audio passes out of VCF1 into VCF2, out of VCF2 into VCA1, which is internally normal to VCA2. So again, we have two low pass filters in series with a mono output. Honestly, there's not much use for having two low pass filters in series, at least that I can think of at the moment. Although you could patch the output of filter one into a VCA and drive the first filter for some saturation. Or you can do what we're about to do, use the first filter as a VCO. Let's start by cranking up the resonance and getting a sine wave. Okay, let's tune this. Uh, so I'm just going to turn off the uh, resonance for a second and use an oscillator as reference. It's a C. And um, close enough. And I'll turn uh, key tracking all the way up so our filter tracks the keyboard. 
Great, that works fine. So that's how you patch uh, two low-pass filters in series, but we're going to go a step further here. So I'm going to move this over to the malt and patch VCF2 out into our malt. So it's still going to the VCA, and I'll put the VCA back in drone mode. Okay, now I'm patching out of the malt, which is our VCF2 output, and patching into the CV input for VCF1. So we're modulating filter 1's frequency with the output of filter 2. In other words, we're processing our sine wave with filter 2 and feeding it back to modulate its own frequency. Is it without frequency modulation? Just a regular sine wave, although my scope's kind of skewed. And with frequency modulation, you can see we're getting, yeah, this pointy sine wave with some extra harmonics. Kind of a triangle sine wave, I guess. Because spacing's at zero, both filters are sharing the same cutoff. So let's patch a DC offset to filter 2's cutoff. So now we can change the cutoff of filter 2 without affecting the frequency of our sine oscillator. And if we add resonance to filter 2, we can get some different sounds. That's kind of cool. Yeah, I like that. Okay, we should actually talk a little bit about the attenuators on the matriarch and how they behave. The attenuators on the matriarch should have been labeled as voltage-controlled attenuverting amplifiers with DC offset, but it would be hard to fit all that in such a little space. Understanding how these function is really key to getting the most out of the matriarch, so let's take a quick look at the attenuators. So I'm going to patch out of this attenuator directly into my scope, and yeah, as you can see, with nothing patched into the input, the attenuator works as a DC offset. In other words, it's sending out a uh, static voltage depending on the knob position and as you can see it's uh, bipolar so both positive and negative voltages all right let's get a sine wave going here so on the spectrometer on the left there we can see as well as hear the uh, frequency cutoff as i turn the knob now let's patch the um, attenuator i've got it molted so it's going to our scope but we'll patch the other end into the cutoff frequency of the filter and as you see, our DC offset is acting just the exact same way as our filter cutoff knob. So you may be wondering, uh, why bother with this then? Well, for two reasons. Uh, remember, the matrix two filters share the same cutoff knob, so this is how we can get independent control over the cutoff of one of the filters. Um, but also, we don't need to use this on cutoff. We can use the DC offset on a ton of other parameters on the matrix. It's just easiest to hear and visualize offset with the, with the filter. All right, let's take a look at the difference between the input and the CV input on the attenuators. I'm going to use an LFO to help demonstrate this. The blue trace is our LFO, and our cutoff is on the spectrum analyzer on the left. Okay, I'm going to patch the LFO into the attenuator input. The attenuator is at zero. You can still kind of hear it wiggle a little bit. So let's turn it up. The green trace on the scope is the output of the attenuator. If you compare the input, the blue trace, and the output, the green trace, you can see that the voltage range is diminished or attenuated. If we go counterclockwise, we can invert the signal. Same thing, start with slightly attenuated inverted, go all the way up to fully inverted. Normally we call uh, attenuators that invert as well as attenuate attenuverters, so we've got three attenuverters on the matriarch. Okay, let's take out the LFO and plug it into the CV control input on the attenuator. First, we'll put it um, back to zero. The CV input is like having an invisible hand turn the knob. In this case, our invisible hand is a triangle LFO. As you can see, the CV output is actually larger than the LFO input. That's because the DC offset from the attenuator boosts or amplifies the CV. So you can use an attenuator to boost a low CV signal if you want. I'm going to patch an inline attenuator between the uh, LFO and the CV in so we can have a closer look at what's going on. By attenuating the LFO, which is modulating the um, attenuator, we're getting a similar sort of sound to what we were getting when we were, had the LFO patched into the attenuator, but we regain control over the offset of the filter now. So we can change the range in which the LFO modulates the cutoff. Okay, let's bring the cutoff way down with the offset and turn up the amount of LFO modulating the attenuator. Now we've got unipolar modulation of the filter. Works the same, of course, if we bring the offset or cut up all the way up as well. Okay, cool. 
The reason I'm going through this stuff with the attenuator input versus control is because I've had a lot of questions about why in some patches I'll use the CV input instead of the attenuator input. I hope that demonstration just sorted it out, but if not, let's try the same thing with uh, envelopes instead of LFOs. So let's take the envelope out of this uh, filter envelope, uh, molting it to the scope. Okay, there's our envelope. Let's take the other end of the molt and patch it into the um, input of the attenuator. So the attenuator is at uh, zero, or, well, now it's at zero. So uh, blue trace, once again, is our envelope direct out. And let's turn up the attenuator. And just like the LFO, an attenuated version of the uh, envelope. And we can also invert it. My scope's uh, free running mode. Let's see if I can time it so I get one right in the middle. There we go. Okay, so uh, let's put that back to zero. So in this case, the um, attenuator is acting the same way as our envelope amount knob. So let's patch it into the CV input. So once again, our invisible hand method. So we're getting full envelope, and you can see it's getting cut off there. So bring down the offset, and there we go. So with things patched like this, we have independent control over the cutoff of the filter with the attenuator, which is being modulated by the envelope. If we want to attenuate the amount of envelope modulation, we need to use another attenuator. Uh, let me show you something I just discovered, actually. Okay, so I'm going to use these attenuators over on the left here. So I'm going to patch um, output of the attenuator into filter cutoff. And the envelope, oops, sorry, output into the... Uh, cut off in and the envelope into the input this time. So we're using this attenuator to uh, modulate the envelope amount. Put it zero. Turn it up. Now we've got our envelope modulation. But check this out. If I use this attenuator with it unpatched, it acts as an offset for the attenuator below. So it's like patching a um, cable into the CV control. We just don't need to patch anything. Pretty cool. So this knob axes are cut off. And this one's still our envelope amount. Okay, back to our filter patch that we started a couple minutes ago. Quick recap. VCF1 going into the input of VCF2. VCF2 out into a malt and from there into VCA1 input. And we're feeding the output of VCF2 back into the CV in for VCF1. Okay, put the VCA in drone mode. And there's our weirdo sine triangle we had a couple minutes ago. And I'm going to patch out of the attenuator into the cutoff of VCF2. So we've got control of our filter again. And let's just slowly sweep the cutoff and hear how it affects our, our VCO. Subharmonic there. That's cool. I liked it best around here. Okay, we'll stick with that for now. And let's get the arpeggiator going. Sounds pretty cool. Interesting wave. Okay. 
patch the uh, envelope into the CV control in. It's actually get an attenuator in between them. Okay. And we'll dial in some envelope modulation. Just a little bit of envelope modulation. And then I'm going to play with the cutoff because if we're careful, we can get a vowel or formant sound. There. Oh, shoot, I moved. That sounds cool. Almost like a human voice. Nice. Yeah, I like that. Let's take it out of drone mode and play with the amp envelope. No, I gotta keep a slightly longer attack to keep the human sort of sound going. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Sort of a cross between a chipmunk and a, and a human voice. Nice. Okay, since we're experimenting with uh, FM, frequency modulation, we might as well try using an oscillator now. So just out of oscillator 4 into attenuator in. Oh, that's really cool. Let's try the envelope again. Mm. It's a little too ugly. We're definitely overdriving the filter. You can hear the distortion. Not my cup of tea, but maybe somebody else can find a use for that sound. Let's dial it back a bit. That's a bit better. So to recap, we're using filter 1 as an oscillator, which is being processed by filter 2, which is then being fed back to modulate the frequency of filter 1. But we're also modulating filter 2 with an oscillator at audio rate as well as an envelope. So there's a lot going on, but if we uh, make small changes, we can get a ton of different crazy sounds. More metallic. Definitely sounds more uh, West Coast Bukla-ish than a Moog. Getting all these crazy subtle harmonics. Okay, I think I like it there. Let's add some delay. Wow, yeah, that's a pretty cool sound. That's a pretty cool patch. Let's see what happens if we use the oscillator and modulate the um, uh, CV control. Definitely more of a classic FM sound. Just swoop the cutoff and see what we get. Try a pulse wave. Oh, it's like the circus. Yeah, I don't like that as much. Go back to saw. kind of neat. I like the weird rhythms that just pop up from the uh, feedback. It sounds like a messed up uh, DFAM. The broken DFAM patch. 
Okay, well, anyway, I think you get the idea with this patch. Uh, lots of experimentation and patience, and you can come up with some pretty cool, interesting sounds. Definitely inharmonic sounds, but uh, cool sounds nonetheless. Okay, on to the next one. All right, if we leave things patched like this, but simply crank up the resonance on filter 2 to get it to self-oscillate, we can get a fake Platt style 2 operator FM VCO. Let's get filter 2 self-oscillating. Basically, with two operator FM, the idea is to use one sine wave to modulate the frequency of the other. So this attenuator is controlling the frequency of our second sine wave. Let's just sweep the filter. And resonance will control the volume of our second sine wave. So it's acting like a kind of simplified version of the morph knob on the uh, plats. So we don't have control over um, modulation index like you would on plats, but we can still get a whole bunch of pretty cool sounds. All right, cool, let's just try it with an arpeggiator. And again, with the arpeggiator playing, I'm just going to sweep the filter and experiment a bit to give us an idea of the different sounds we can get. Okay, let's take this patch to the uh, next level and try some modulation. So filter two is modulating the frequency of filter one, so we're gonna unpatch that from the malt, take a longer patch and patch it into this attenuator, and out of the attenuator back into the cutoff of filter one. As we learned previously, we can use the attenuator to boost our signal, so let's try that out. So up around here, four o'clock to five o'clock, is where our boost is happening. And we can get a real grody FM modulation. That sounds great. Cool. Almost bell-like modulation that you can't really get with any of the... Um, oscillators on board the matriarch but we can get it through uh, this patch so let's patch uh, some envelope modulation so i'm going to go out of the filter envelope into our cv control bring that right down maybe bring a decay down just mess around with the envelope till we find a sound we like so the filter envelope is modulating the amount of uh, filter two modulating filter one so what I'm going for here is just a little bit of modulation at the beginning of each note to sort of simulate the strike of a bell. All right, arpeggiator on. Cool. Let's experiment a bit. Oh, that's cool. Oh, too much strike. Getting some contrary motion. Nice, like this patch. All right, now we're going to try some cross modulation. 
So I'm going to unpatch this attenuator. Output of VCF2 is still going into the molt, but now I'm going to take the output of VCF1 and take it out of VCF2 input and put it into the cutoff input for VCF2, out of the malt into the cutoff input of VCF1. So we're cross-modulating VCF1 and VCF2. We're going to get some crazy sounds. Nice. Okay, so remember spacing controls the cutoff of uh, filter 1, relative to filter 2, of course. Cool. And filter 2 will control both oscillators, so we can use it as our master tuning if we want. Still key tracks okay? Let's try a sequence and experiment. Cool. Okay, let's try uh, messing around with spacing. This is actually closer to plots than the other patch I showed you before. You can get a whole bunch of different FM sounds. Weird. And as we raise the frequency of ECF1, we get more of those uh, metallic sounds we associate with, um, uh, with FM. Cool, so I think you get the idea. Uh, definitely worth experimenting. A variety of different tonal colors are possible. So up to now, all the patches we've tried have used at least one of the filters as an oscillator, but let's see what happens if we pass another oscillator through this patch. So first I'm just gonna bring the resonance down on both filters so they're no longer producing sine waves. And I'm gonna use two oscillators hard synced, bring them up in the uh, mixer here. Both are on pulse waves, one's an octave up. And let's set up some filter modulation just for fun. So I'm going to go with the step triangle, um, modulating the cutoff. Uh, bring up the mod wheel about halfway for now. And since we've got them hard synced, I'm going to get a bunch of pitch modulation to affect our oscillator too. Let's try it. Oops, forgot to turn on the sequencer. of the amplifier. You can hear more of the modulation now. But I think I like it punchier. So to recap, we're modulating the frequency of each filter at audio rate, which will give us an FM sound, with the outputs of the opposite filter. We're also using the step triangle LFO, which is internally synced to the sequencer, to modulate both of the filter cutoffs. If we bring up resonance, we'll hear the audio rate modulation clearer, and we'll get a little pitch wobble. Check it out. Cool. I don't know how I'd describe that sound. The pitch wobble gives it a kind of a percussive sound, but at the same time an underwater sound. Neat. Alright, since we're not using any of the uh, filters as VCOs now, there's really no point in keeping it in mono, so uh, let's see what happens if we patch this in stereo. I'll bring the spacing up so the cutoffs are closer so we get a more um, uh, balanced output. And, um, oh yeah, this envelope's not doing anything, so we'll go into split mode and we'll have um, stereo envelopes.
just make some small movements with the filter and the envelopes until I get the get a sound I like. It's a pretty cool patch, worth exploring more. I hope you come up with some cool ideas with that. I think that will about conclude the uh, filter feedback patching ideas for this video at least. So let's move on to something else. A question about this a couple weeks ago. So let's take a look at the pulse wave on the matriarch. Like a lot of the other Moog synths, it's not what you'd call a perfect square. But if we leave the filter wide open and crank the resonance while it's out of audio range, we can get an even pulse. So there we have it. If you need an even pulse for some reason, that's how you do it. It, it does sound a little different, really nothing to write home about, but if uh, you really want to get that pure computer-like pulse sound, um, it's how you do it. Okay, on to more important things. Let's turn up some noise and do a quick review of the um, parallel filter mode. So if I put the um, cutoff at about center and offset the spacing slightly, you can see we're getting a notch filter. And if we leave spacing alone and turn the cutoff, we can move our notch around. So let's try this with the pulse wave. Okay, already you can see that it's really kind of altered the, uh, the harmonics of the wave. And if I turn this down, you can see our, our notch is obviously at the fundamental. And look at how that's altered the wave shape. It almost sounds like a wave shaper, like a, a bifold or something. I mean, I guess that's kind of what a filter is. You can see the notch cut away some of those harmonics. And I guess the sound most people would associate with the notch filter is a um, somewhat of a hollow sound. Now as we get up into the high frequencies, it actually reminds me a lot of the sound of a mini Moog. I don't know if it's just my mini Moog, but it um, seems that my mini Moog always leaves a little bit of the top end in. Anyway, we'll bring it back down. So in this video, I'm going to talk a lot about the parallel filter. And to be honest, I use it most of the time for monophonic bass sounds. Nice hollow bass sound. Slowly sweeping the filter. Really sounds cool in this mode but I really like that. Okay, let's sweep it a bit. Okay, we don't want to have to always do this manually, so let's uh, use an LFO to modulate our uh, frequency a bit. Now, it sounds great on bass, and it's a little more subtle if we go um, up the octave, I'll show you. Almost more like a vibrato if you're up top. Well, I guess that depends on where the cutoff is. Anyway, that's what we're going to work on first. Some monophonic lead or bass sounds in parallel mode. Oh, I should show you this though. This is kind of cool. Bring up the noise again. If we crank the um, uh, high pass filter, so the spacing, all the way um, clockwise and turn up the resonance, we can get this kind of a shelf. Uh, filter. Now this is where I really find the uh, mini Moog type sounds. So see that shelf? Let's try that out with the uh, oscillator now. Use a saw and you get this really gritty sound. Beautiful. Very mini Moogish. We've still got a lot of low end warmth, but we've got that sizzle up in the top. Parallel filter rocks. Beautiful. Just love this. 
Okay, let's play around with the spacing a bit and we can get some resonant squeals. We bring it down a little bit thanks to our envelope and the lower spacing. Cool. Almost sounds like a um, talk box or a human voice at times. Like a formant filter. Good listen to this all day. Okay, cool. Uh, on to the next thing. Let's make an acid base patch with parallel filter mode. All right, I'm going to start by just programming in a sequence. Um, I guess 16 steps, sort of typical acid sequence. Let's see what I can do here. Shoot, I already lost count. Uh, you can copy the sequence if you want. Maybe I'll put it up on the screen, playing it slow enough. I think that's 16. Let's see if I counted right. Okay, that's 16. It's good enough for now. Okay, filters in parallel mode. I'm going to turn resonance on low pass up to around 2 o'clock and resonance on high pass at around 11. Getting that hollow sound. Spacing's at 1 o'clock and no envelope modulation. Let's sweep the filter. Cool. Okay, this sounds like it's probably the best range to play around with. That's a bit too low. Yeah, around here is good. There's a video I did a couple months ago about um, using MIDI CC messages to automate um, filter moves like this. So if you really like something you come up with with a filter move like this, it is possible to record it if you want. Okay, um, let's work a little bit on our um, oscillators and get a little bit more interesting sound going. Okay, so I'm going to go into drone mode and uh, bring up oscillator 3 and 4. I'm going to hard sync to oscillator 3. Bring down oscillator 1 for a second. Um, oscillator 4 is a pulse and oscillator 3 is narrow pulse. All right, out of drone mode, I'll start the sequence. All right, let's just have a listen to oscillator 4. Hard sync. So in parallel mode, we don't really lose that much high end, so that could be a good thing or a bad thing. I do like that squelchy sound from um, pitch modulating the hard sync oscillator, so probably we'll set up some modulation for that in a second. I'm just getting my balance together now. Sounds good. Okay, since we've got a fuller voice now, you can hear that our filter moves don't make as big of a difference as they did when it was just one oscillator. But we'll sort that out later. But first, let's add some modulation. So um, go to um, step triangle, I guess, which is a sync to the um, arpeggiator clock, and add in some pulse width modulation. Cool. The uh, step triangle LFO is always synced to the um, arpeggio clock. Well, at least the steps are, but the rate of the triangle itself can be sped up or slowed down. That's how you can get some more random sounding modulations. Bring the modulation back in. Cool. Okay, let's set up some pitch modulation for oscillator four. Like that, get that squelchy sound. So we're gonna flip the switch to oscillator two and four only and add in my pitch modulation. That's cool. Might be a bit over the top. Let's just have a listen to it by itself again. With this step triangle, we're not going to get that swoosh, but I still really like this sound. And bring down the mod wheel a little bit, I think. Cool. Alright, this is starting to come together, but for any good acid sequence, we're going to need some glide. And we're going to need to be able to alter the gate length or the envelope. We can do it in real time. Moog's made the sustained slider, so this is easy to do. That sounds cool. But for faster sequences, it's pretty hard to do it in real time. Although, this is kind of fun. It 
that sounds cool. Uh, but let's try to set up some modulation and do this automatically, which is not easy on the matriarch because there's no CV control over the envelopes or gate length. So I'm patching gate out of our envelope into the scope so we can have a look. And there's our gate. It's a unipolar pulse wave. So I want to be able to alter the width of the pulse wave. So let's use this Mother 32 as an example. So I've set up a sequence. On the Mother 32, you can modulate gate length. So let's have a look at that in our scope. So the bottom trace is the clock signal from the Mother 32, and the top trace is the gate. The gate is obviously different lengths. So let's plug that into the matriarch to see what it sounds like. So trigger in on the VCA envelope, and you can hear that we're obviously getting different length notes. Cool. So how do we do this without using Mother 32 or an external module? That's the question. So unfortunately, you can't modulate the pulse width of either of the LFOs on the matriarch. So my first idea was to try an oscillator and slow it right down. So here's oscillator 2 in the scope. Even at the lowest setting, it's still at audio rate, still too fast for triggers for most things. And I'm modulating the pulse width with this attenuator, and it's really not making any difference. So let's try patching this into the rate input on the arpeggiator. And it's not going to change the pulse width, obviously, but it might give us enough random variation to get different gate lengths. So I'll patch the uh, scope into a uh, gate out here and start the sequencer. Huh, it's kind of working. That's actually pretty cool. So what's happening is the um, oscillator is modulating the um, rate of the arpeggiator, and it just so happens that at this tempo and pitch of the oscillator, it's working. But if I change the rate, you can hear that now what we're getting is kind of a drunken sequence. Let's see if I can get it back. I think that was luck. It's still kind of drunk sounding. Okay, that sort of worked, but I think it was more luck the first time. So let's take a look at the utility LFO in the scope, which is bipolar. So there's our bipolar pulse. Again, it's not possible to modulate the pulse width of this LFO. If it was, then our job would be done already. But I've got another idea using this uh, bipolar LFO. So I'm going to go into global settings and turn off local uh, control for the sequencer, which detaches it from the internal routing. Okay, that works. So now I'm going to patch the LFO into this malt up here. And this cable's going into the um, arpeggiator clock input on the back of the matriarch, out of the malt into this attenuator, and out of the attenuator. I've got it molted so we can go to the scope and to the trigger input of our VCA envelope. So the line on the scope is zero volts. This attenuator, as you can see, is attenuating the height of our pulse wave. And this is acting as offset, as we learned earlier in the video. And as you can hear, if I offset the pulse above zero volts, it won't trigger. It leaves the gate open. So I'm getting different note lengths. So all we have to do then is modulate the um, CV input of this attenuator, and then we'll get our different gate lengths. So I'm going to use the step triangle wave and patch that into the CV input on the attenuator. The step triangle is internally synced to the rate of the arpeggiator, so that makes life easier. So we'll get cleaner uh, subdivisions. And let's just dial in some offset and attenuation and see if we can get a sound we like. Cool, that sounds great, it's working. Now, we're not really modulating the gate length, we're just kind of faking it, but the sound that we're getting is close enough to the sound I wanted that uh, I'm gonna call this a win. So let's get our sequence going again with pitch, so plugging CV out of the arpeggiator into pitch one input. Cool, that sounds pretty good. getting different note lengths. Now because the uh, step triangle is synced to the arpeggiator, you can hear that we're, our note length pattern is uh, repetitive. So if I want to change that, I can patch the triangle LFO into the rate input on the mod wave. Now it's a little 
more random when he's going to play short or uh, long notes. Cool, this is working out great. So again, if you want a uh, more random note length, um, you can modulate the rate of the step triangle wave with anything. I'm using the triangle LFO, but if you want a pattern, just leave it unpatched. Okay, let's get back to the filter. I want to be able to modulate my filter nice and slow, but we've already used up all our LFOs. So we're going to use this unused envelope generator as an LFO by patching the envelope end out into trigger input. So I've got it going to the scope. And as you can see, we now have an LFO with control over the shape with the attack and release. Pretty cool. Nice shark fin LFO. Cool. So I'm going to patch the envelope out into this malt here. And out of the malt, we'll go into an attenuator. So we can attenuate the modulation, obviously. And out of the attenuator into the cutoff of CV1 input, which, as you remember from the previous video, modulates both high pass and low pass filters. So I think I kind of want a triangle like shape. So if I keep the attack and release uh, at the same values or close to the same values, I'll get close to a, a triangle LFO. If I put the release down all the way, I'd get a saw. If I put the release up all the way, I'd get a ramp. And I'm also modulating the linear FM of oscillator four, which is synced. So we're getting that swoop sound that we wanted from the uh, hard synced oscillator. And this patch is really coming together now, thanks to that uh, parallel filter mode. Let's do a little bit of tweaking. Yeah, this patch is really coming together. I like it a lot. Okay, so parallel filter mode is excellent for uh, bass sounds and sequences like this. We're not losing any of the high end, but we're still getting a lot of cool filter modulation and tonal changes. So all that's left is to uh, patch in some drums. So just taking the gate out of this malt here, I'm going to plug that into uh, marbles, which is going to uh, trigger plonk, and we'll have some drums. Let's see. filter bass sequence. Sounds great. Okay, time to go on to another patch. Okay, so again, we're in um, parallel filter mode, which we just discovered is excellent for bass sounds, but it's also great, of course, for keys and pad patches where you want to keep that high end in and have a more uh, even frequency spectrum. And in this patch, I'm going to use a ton of amplitude modulation, so I don't want to lose that high end sparkle that's, uh, that you get from that. So parallel mode is perfect. So I'm patching wave out of oscillator one into this attenuator, which we're going to use as a VCA to get our amplitude modulation out of that into the oscillator two input on the mixer and molting that to a scope. So let's turn up the attenuator so we can hear and have a look at our oscillator. So there's our pulse wave. So I'm going to use the wave out of oscillator two to modulate the CV input on our um, attenuator. So that's how we're going to get our amplitude modulation. And there's that beautiful AM sound. With the attenuator um, past zero, I'm getting dry and wet signal. If I put it at zero, I'm just getting my wet. And yeah, that is super cool. Let's just experiment, try to find a sound we like. I think I liked it better there. Go with that for now. I'm going to bring up oscillator one in the mixer to use as a tuning reference. You can get it kind of close to fifths or octave plus a fifth, but I want a little bit out of tune so I get 
Yeah, that, that grit. Amplitude modulation grit. Great, I like that. Okay, we don't need this scope anymore, so um, let's just unpatch this cable here. And I'm going to do the same thing with oscillators 3 and 4, but, oh yeah, first I've got to put um, oscillator 2 back into the mixer. And I'll quickly patch up oscillators 3 and 4 the same way we did oscillator 1 and 2. So the modulated oscillators are going into mixer channels 2 and 4. Okay, turning on drone mode so I can just get a quick balance of all the oscillators. Well, I kind of like this one up high like this. I think I'm going to going to change oscillator 2 to the same thing. Okay, good to go. Bring in a bit of the uh, dry oscillators as well as the amplitude modulated ones. Keep the dry a little bit lower. And I'm going to go into duophonic mode. Cool. Duophonic AM keys. All right, so this video is supposed to be about the filter, so let's get some filter modulation going. Like I said, we're in parallel mode, so let's start with some envelope modulation of the filter, just using a passive attenuator out of the envelope directly into the cutoff of filter 2, so it's modulating the low-pass filter. I want a more sustained key sound, so let's change up the uh, amp envelope. And I just want a slight pluck from my low-pass filter, so I'm just going to make a real short decay. That sounds good, I think. Great, uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, using parallel filter mode, we keep the uh, high end of the amplitude modulation for our bells, but we get a little pluck from the low pass filter if we modulate it slightly. Let's just add a little bit of secret sauce, the delay. So I'm taking um, the slewed random LFO, patching that into an attenuator, and out of the attenuator, going into the time input on the delay. Turn up the attenuator a bit. So what I'm going for is a little uh, like tape wobble type sound. Let's see if it worked. There's that wobble. Cool. All right, let's try it out in a sequence. Oh, no, instead, I want to show you that this uh, patch sounds great in four voice mode as well. Because all the oscillators are receiving the same pitch information, the amplitude modulation is tracking. And we can use this in four voice mode even if we're using amplitude modulation. Cool. And of course, the same goes for unison mode. Works great as a lead. Great, so that works great as keys, so let's try it as a uh, duophonic pad. So I'm going to get rid of the uh, delay modulation for now, and if I want a pad, I want a nice long attack. And uh, release is already pretty long, let's put the decay up there, leave sustain where it is, and I'll get rid of the uh, envelope modulation for now. In one of my previous videos, I already talked about how the CV inputs for the filters behave. For this patch, I want the low-pass filter to be static, so I'm just going to patch a dead patch into the CV input for filter 2. If you haven't seen that video or don't know what I'm talking about, I think it's right at the beginning of the part 2 video. But basically, this dead patch is only affecting the cutoff of filter 2. I'm going to use the step triangle wave again. It's already patched into the attenuator and bringing the rate down a bit. And again, I'm going to use the uh, filter envelope generator to modulate the CV input of the attenuator. And I've got a passive attenuator in between again to control the envelope amount. Bring the attenuator to zero. I want to use a really long or slow attack on this envelope. I'll bring the amp one down a little bit. So the idea is the modulation will be brought in by the filter envelope after the VCA is triggered by the amp envelope. And because we're in parallel filter mode, it's going to be bright as we've discovered. So I'm going to switch all these oscillators to triangle waves, which have a little bit less harmonic content. Okay, let's get our filter set up. I'm going to bring up key tracking, probably just halfway for now. Don't need it all the way up. And I'll bring resonance down on low pass filter and bring it up to about the halfway mark on the high pass filter. Oh, and I forgot to patch the modulation into the cutoff of CV1. So there we go. So step triangle LFO is modulating the high pass filter, which is being brought in by the 
filter envelope. So let's hear how it sounds. Nice, so the low pass filter is static, but the high pass filter is being modulated by the step triangle and giving us those nice subtle bleeps and bloops. If we want more, we can turn up the sustain on the filter envelope. I use a parallel filter mode a lot for patches like this when I want to get some uh, comb filtering or subtle modulation with uh, timbre changes, but not necessarily affecting the overall tone of the patch. Pretty cool. If you want more subtle filter modulation, of course, you can turn down the envelope modulation or even try a different LFO. Instead of using the step triangle, um, the triangle wave itself sounds great. Okay, let's get another pad going. This one's going to be a little bit more adventurous. So oscillator 1 can put on triangle, oscillators 2 and 3 on narrow pulse, oscillator 4 on saw. Okay, so far so good. And patching mod wave out directly into the cutoff of filter 2 this time. It's set to slewed random. Just want some subtle variation. And I think actually I'm going to use the cutoff modulation in here as well, so it gets a little bit of filter one. Can bring that up with the mod wheel later. Okay, next I'm going to patch the triangle LFO out into the attenuator here. And out of the attenuator, we're going to go into the molt. And out of the molt, into the cutoff CV in for filter one. Okay, let's see what we've got. Okay, let's bring in that triangle modulation. Speed up the triangle. 
And I think we need more resonance so it's more audible. There we go. You can hear it sweeping. Okay, gonna grab another passive inline attenuator and once again go out of the envelope into the control input on the attenuator. So once again, the envelope is modulating the triangle LFO modulation amount. Not sure I like that. I'm gonna try a different envelope shape. Bring attack all the way down, a little more release, less decay. Tiny bit more envelope. Now we're getting a subtle sweep. It's gonna be a lot of filter modulation in this patch, so I want it to be a little understated, so all the modulation fits together nicely. Okay, I'm gonna patch envelope end out, which is a trigger signal, into the rate input of the LFO. And this will reset the LFO at the end of the envelope cycle. All right, now we're getting somewhere. Okay, let's tweak the filter settings. I'm gonna bring the cutoff up a little bit and offset the high pass filter. Sounds good there. I think we found the sweet spot. Okay, I'm gonna use the internal envelope amount knob and invert it, which is gonna affect both of the filters. Okay, let's work on the amp envelope. I want longer release, uh, more sustain. That'll bring the decay down a little bit, make sure the attack's at zero. If I hold the keys down, we can hear the modulation coming in and out. Cool. Okay, let's go out of the sequencer CV input into the malt. We're gonna modulate a bunch of things with this sequence CV. So first we're gonna go into the attenuator, which for now we'll keep at zero. So we're gonna use this to modulate the internal envelope amount. So plug that into envelope amount. And we'll go out of the malt again into this other attenuator here. And before I forget, I'm gonna invert this attenuator slightly out of the bottom attenuator into the mix input on the delay. And I'm gonna use it as a boost, so cranking it all the way up. And I'll bring up delay a little bit here and offset the spacing. Short delay time, sync and ping pong. Why are we not hearing the modulation? Oh, I don't have the sequencer running. Okay, before I get that going, uh, I've got one more opening on my malt, so I'm gonna use that to modulate the delay feedback. So as the pitch rises from the sequencer, so will our filter and delay modulation. Cool, that worked great, but this patch, believe it or not, sounds great even without the sequence modulation. a weird but cool patch but check this out so if we use the keyboard tracking and crank it up and play notes in the top and bottom register we can actually get some really neat effects so let me show you that so again turn keyboard tracking all the way up and what we're doing is we're telling the filter to respond to the range of the keyboard so depending on what key is played first we can get filter glitches simply by playing the keys. That's pretty cool. You can also hear that weird uh, delay glitchiness happening. That happens when the uh, matriarch's delay is synced to the arpeggiator and there's tempo changes. It's cool. Okay, but this patch works best with the sequence, so program in a polyphonic sequence and let her rip.
that patch, but we're getting near the end. I think I got one more patch we can do in this video. Super Plate Reverb plugin just came out today, so I wanted to try it out in a patch. And yep, it sounds great. So I saved the weirdest to last. If you're still watching at this point, it means you're in for the long haul. Let's use the filter to modulate CV. I'm gonna use filter two to pass audio through, so just patching filter out directly into the VCA input and mixer out directly into VCF2 in. And I want independent control of both filter cutoff, so patching attenuator out into cutoff in for VCF2 and doing the same with this attenuator to VCF1. And we're going to go into global settings here. C sharp 2, F sharp 1 to turn off local control of the ARP sequencer. Just test it, make sure it works. Yep, good. Okay, go back into global settings, and this time we're going to set it up so the. Um, Sequencer CV out mirrors the keyboard CV. Yeah, it's a D0 for this one. Okay, we're going to patch out of the sequencer uh, CV output into this mult and into my scope. Out of the mult into the pitch input on oscillator 1. Let's get the arpeggiator going and take a look at the CV. Okay, I've got about a two octave range going, so it's not a huge difference in the voltage, but good enough for now. Now, we're going to patch the CV sequence directly into the filter. So CV is going in the filter, not audio. Yep, that's crazy. I know. Okay, so we're going to go out of the filter. Back for now, we'll just go right back into the pitch of oscillator 1 and into the scope, and let's see what happens. And get the sequencer going. Why don't we hear anything? Oh, i got to turn on drone mode. Okay, top trace is our pitch sequence unaffected, bottom trace is our filtered CV. And it's a lot different. Okay, let's turn up the cutoff. Actually, let's open up filter 2 all the way first. Oops, I had the patch wrong. That's better. Okay, we can bring the cutoff down a bit. And now let's experiment with the cutoff on our CV and see what happens. So if we bring it all the way down, we just basically stop all the CV get some weird little squiggly CV line. But that's actually kind of cool sounding. Maybe not the best for musical situations, but for sound design, it could be onto something. And as we bring the cutoff all the way up, it doesn't really do anything, so let's bring that back down and bring in some resonance. And you'll hear that we're going to get some pitch wobbles now. Oh, a bit of distortion too, if we want. Let's bring the resonance back down and get those wobbles back. Cool. This could be really good for weird uh, percussion sequences or sounds or for sound design or even for some weird beat, I guess. Okay, so let's work on that then. So first thing I guess we got to do is set up some gate signals, seeing as we detach the sequencer in global settings. So out of the gate of the sequencer into this malt. From the malt, we'll go into the trigger inputs on both of the uh, envelope generators. 
I'm going to use a passive inline attenuator again to go out of the first envelope generator here and into the CV control for our attenuator, which is modulating our audio signal. And let's get the sequencer fired up. All right, what do we have here? Sounds like a dying animal. Okay, let's make some adjustments and see if we can get this to sound a little bit more interesting. Okay, just a little bit of filter modulation. And let's get a, a plucky sound, because this sounds like it's going to work best as a percussive sound. All right, that already sounds better. I really like that low pitch wobble. Okay, let's play with the cutoff a bit of our CV. With the resonance up like that, we can get a kind of an FM-ish sound again. Wow, that's weird. Sounds like beach balls now. Okay, more adjustments on the envelope. Try a little less filter modulation for the audio source. That's kind of cool. Okay, let's add in some more oscillators. almost defamish again now yeah i like it you could use this on a soundtrack or something like that for sure okay let's go a step further now we're going to use the sequence cv to modulate the cutoff of our filter one wow that's neat Let's get the FM back with resonance in. Nice. You could totally use this on a soundtrack. Or even just sample that low wobbly note for a kick. Okay. Let's uh, just put it into arpeggiator mode, turn up the, uh, the speed bit, and we'll get some bass and wobbly toms. Okay, check this out. If I use a wide CV range, now that is cool. different sequence. Okay, and as always, you always get the best results if you modify things in real time. For some reason, this reminds me of the uh, Tuscan Raiders song in the original Star Wars. It's done with all those timpanis and weird percussion. Okay, let's turn this into a drone. So long envelopes, long attacks, bad reverb, instant ambience. That really cool saturation or distortion sound we're hearing is not from the plugin. It's from overdriving the uh, mixer on the matriarch and from the frequency modulated pitch CV. Yeah, I love how the notes take a second to settle because we're filtering the CV. That's super cool. Wonky ornamento. This is something that is definitely worth exploring more in the future, but it is also the end of this video.
and the end of this series on the filter for now. So thanks very much for watching. I hope you've learned something and I hope this inspires you to explore the synth a little bit further. Cheers.